Hello scholars, my name is Dr. Kara Stillen, and the goal of this channel is to make academic subjects easier to understand. If you haven't already done so, please click that like button and don't forget to subscribe so I can continue making videos for you as quickly as possible. In the last video, we covered disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. In this video, we're going to look at major depressive disorder. So let's begin. In order to be diagnosed with major depressive disorder, an individual has to have the following symptoms. Number one, the individual has to have more than five of the following symptoms during, the, during a consecutive time of two weeks, which can be a little bit different from how the individual is feeling. The diagnosis for sure has to have one of the first two components for it to fit major depressive disorder. The first one is a depressed mood. The second one is a lack of pleasure or interest in activities that the person used to enjoy doing. So it has to be one of those two that fit in with the five symptoms. Now, Here's some more symptoms. The individual has a depressed mood for a majority of the day, almost every single day. The professional will know this because the individual will self-report or this may be noticed by others such as family and friends. If the individual being sought or brought to a professional is a child, the child may show irritability and may not be able to self-report. The individual, number two, the individual will not experience pleasure as compared to other times within their life. They'll experience this kind of lack of interest where they want to stay at home all the time. Um, and then they want to do this almost single, uh, almost every single day for the majority of their days. Now, this would be different if somebody says, I just want to stay home because I don't want to get shot. Then that becomes an anxiety disorder. That doesn't necessarily have to do with depression. It might be some, some of the reason that it's woven into there, but we wouldn't be able to flatly say this person has depression because they are afraid of being shot somewhere. Then that becomes a different situation. The individual will have significant weight loss or weight gain, meaning a significant change in appetite almost every single day. Another one is the person will experience trouble falling asleep and staying asleep or may sleep all the time and they can't seem to want to wake up. The individual could look listless and may not even want to move. They may look like they're slower as they're walking or their arms and legs are moving slower. They may complain about not having any energy almost every single day. They're experiencing the mood transition. The individual might be full of guilt over things that they may or may not be, you know, hold true to themselves. And sometimes they'll even feel worthless with really no understanding of why um, others may probably don't see them that way. The last two are the person may have trouble making decisions or attempting to think out of an issue almost every single day. And then the individual may think about suicide, may have suicide ideations, meaning different ideas that come up within their head, or they may take part or start creating a plan toward a suicide attempt. And that is very, very serious. So out of those, if they have five of those symptoms, um, that's a pretty good indicator that they have major depressive disorder. But there are four more symptoms that we have to look at. So these symptoms have caused substantial problems in the relationships of the individual. They may cause problems at school or at work or issues at home. These symptoms do not exist because the individual has taken a substance or medication that has affected them. They do not have a medical condition that could bring about the major episode. 
The major depressive episode does not fit the criteria for a psychotic disorder or schizophrenia. So they're, they're not having delusions. They're not having um, hallucinations. So if they're not having those, they can't fit in with this category. The individual has never had hypomanic or manic episodes. And a hypomanic episode fits with bipolar 2 and a manic episode fits with bipolar 1. So when an individual comes in to be seen by a professional, they'll often come in with complaints about excessive fatigue or insomnia. If the professional does not ask about other symptoms, they can often miss the diagnosis of major depression disorder. If the person has slowed their movements and is talking more slowly, this can be indicative of more severe form of major depressive disorder. The individual experiencing extreme guilt can be another sign of significant distress. There are many ways that individuals with major depressive disorders can explain how they're feeling. People have said that sometimes they feel like they're down in the dumps, that they're in a hole they can't crawl out of, that they're surrounded by darkness and they can't move. They can say they're feeling blah. Maybe that they don't have any feelings, that they're depressed, they're discouraged and or just sad. It is normal for someone with MDD, which stands for major depressive disorder, to also complain about aches and pains within the body, even when we don't have a medical diagnosis for them. Sometimes the person will seem quite irritable with others or blame others for the way that they are thinking. Although this is a pretty normal thing that can happen, it can make others extremely frustrated with what these people are saying. Feeling like the person does not want to be a part of the activities and going places tends to be very common as well. Sometimes a person is no longer interested in friends they're used to hanging around and they can even decide that sexual activities are too much work for them and may not even want those either. So, those with MDD, which is major depressive disorder, that's what that stands for, complains about insomnia and is usually because they are waking up in the middle of their sleep or wake up too early and then, can get out, and then cannot get back to bed. Those with hypersomnia may have their di- nights and days mixed up. So they may take a lot of naps or feel as though they, all, they just want to keep going back to sleep. The fatigue that is experienced can be very severe as well. Even a little physical exertion can affect individuals with MDD. Sometimes even washing and dressing in the morning can be physically exhausting. For those that experience overwhelming guilt, this can come about because of the individual who ruminates on something another person did or say, whether or not they interpreted correctly or misinterpreted what the person said. Many times an individual with MDD will display themselves for being sick, not being able to go out and to do things. An individual with MDD may think about suicide where they hope they don't wake up in the morning to believing everyone else would be better off if they weren't here. Individuals may have developed a suicide plan and have created a will or a goodbye letter they want others to see. Sometimes a plan to commit suicide is the purpose of escaping the pain the individual feels. They may not want to be a burden to others anymore and believe this is the best way to exit out of life. MDD is a very high rate of mortality because of the risk of suicide. There is no diagnostic test that can diagnose someone with MDD either, which makes it very difficult to know for sure. Functional fMRI machines have shown abnormalities in the areas of the brain which house emotional regulation, reward-seeking, and emotional processing. Each year, 7% of the population within the United States is diagnosed with MDD. Those are the 18 to 29-year-olds have a three times higher percentage of MDD as compared to those who are in their 60s or older. Females are much more likely to have MDD as compared to males. MDD can come about in any age. 
but it seems to surface more often in adolescents. It is unlikely that the majority of people are diagnosed later in life. Usually, individuals are treated for it beginning in their 20s. Some individuals have experienced remission from MDD. Those who have experienced remission from MDD are asked if they have experienced a two-year period where they have no depressive symptoms. All right. I thank you so much for listening this far, and I hope you have an amazing day. I hope if you're studying, I hope that whole thing becomes more clear, and I will get back to you with more and more videos. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon.